Hello, this is Smith Moore, and today during chemistry we're going to continue our discussion on types of chemical reactions. Specifically today, we're going to talk about double replacement reactions, also known as double displacement reactions. Today's essential question, which remember you need to answer fully in your summary, how are the products of double replacement or displacement reactions determined? Okay, please make sure you have your periodic tables and your platonic ion charts handy. All right, let's do this. Double replacement reactions or double displacement reactions. If solutions of two ionic compounds are mixed, one of two things will happen. Either an aqueous homogeneous mixture will form or a chemical reaction will occur. All right, let's, let's talk about that sentence a little bit. First of all, what's really important is for double replacement reactions to occur, it needs to be two ionic compounds. Okay, if you have an ionic and a covalent compound or two covalent compounds, the reaction's likely going to be a um, synthesis reaction. All right, and then you can either have an aqueous homogeneous solution or mixture. Um, what that means is you've got ions floating around in the water. So that basically means no reaction or you'll get a chemical reaction. You'll form a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Now, for this class, we're going to pretend that all double replacement reactions occur. But keep in mind, they don't all recur. Sometimes you end up with aqueous homogeneous salt mixture, which is no reaction, and sometimes you get the chemical reaction. But for this class, let's just pretend they all occur. Okay. So, with a double replacement reaction, it involves the exchange of the positive ions or the cations between two reacting um, compounds. That means in the reaction, the metal replaces the metal. And um, another way to look at that is that the elements from the left side of the line switch places. We're talking about on the periodic table. Okay. So if you look at this, this down here is our general equation for a double displacement reaction. Ax plus By produces Ay and Bx. So the A and the B switch places. Um, and those are the positives. Remember, the positives are the cations are always written first. Okay? Okay, let's go over the steps to write or complete a double replacement reaction. And the example we'll be using as we're doing this is Na2S, or sodium sulfide, plus CaF2, or calcium fluoride. All right, so step one is to determine the charges on each of the ions in the two compounds. So let me rewrite this. We have Na2S plus CaF2. All right, sodium is a cation with a one plus charge. Sulfur is an anion with a 2 minus charge. Calcium, cation with a 2 plus charge. And fluorine is an anion with a 1 minus charge. Okay, so step one, complete. So the next thing you need to do is write the skeleton equation. So let's write the products, not worrying about balancing or anything, just write the products. And what's going to happen here is the two positives we're going to switch places. Okay, so we're going to end up with CA is now going to hook up with S, and CA has a 2 plus, S has a 2, sorry, has a 2 minus, and sodium is now going to hook up with fluorine. Sodium is 1 plus. And fluorine is 1 minus. All right, next step. Make sure that the ionic compounds are neutral. All of the answers are going to be ionic compounds, so you've got to check to make sure they're neutral. So Ca is 2 plus, S is 2 minus, so they're neutral. So we can get rid of those. And Na is 1 plus, F is 1 minus, so they're neutral. So we can get rid of all these charges now. And the last step is to balance the equation. All right, so our atoms are Na 
S C A N F. And Na is on the reactant side, we have two, and product side we have one. Sulfur's on the reactant side, we have one, and product side one. Calcium's on the reactant side one, and product side one. Fluorine's on the reactant side two, and product side one. All right, so starting from the top to fix the NAs, we have two on the reactant side, so let's put a two in front of NAF on the product side. That gives us two sodiums and two fluorines, and I believe that answers our question. So our final answer is right there. That is how you complete double displacement reactions. Okay. Let's try to do a couple double replacement practice problems. So if you could, if you've got the guts, go ahead and hit pause. Try to do this on your own and then hit play when either you get stuck or when um, you think you got the right answer. All right, so cadmium, we need to figure out the charges, right? Cadmium is not, is a metal, but it's not from group 1A, 2A, or 3A, which means the only way to figure out the charge is to work backwards. So we have one cadmium and two bromines. We know the charge on bromine is 1 minus, which means our total negative charge is 2 minus. So our total positive charge needs to be 2 plus, which makes cadmium 2 plus. Okay, bromine is a 1 minus. Sodium is a 1 plus, And sulfur is a 2 minus. All right, so the two positives, again, are going to switch places. So we're going to end up with sodium hooking up with bromine. Remember, we do not take subscripts with us. Um, so sodium has a charge of 1 plus. Bromine is 1 minus. And cadmium is going to hook up with sulfide. Cadmium's a 2 plus, sulfide's a 2 minus. All right, so NaBr, 1 plus, 1 minus, neutral. Cadmium, 2 plus, sulfur, 2 minus, neutral. So we can get rid of all this extra stuff now. And the last step is to balance the equation. So we have cadmium, bromine, sodium, and sulfur. And on the reactant side, we have one cadmium, we have one on the product side. Bromines, two on the reactant side, one on the product side. Ooh, sodiums, not nitrogens. Sodiums, we have one on the reactant side, one on the product side. And sulfurs, one on the reactant side, and one on the product side. And I miscounted something, didn't I? Let's try that again. How about like that? Does that work? Okay. So to fix this, cadmium good, bromine not so much. There's two on the reactant side, so let's put a two on the product side in front of NABR, which changes our NAs to two and our bromines to two. And there you go. All right, one more. Once again, hit pause. Try to do it by yourself. All right, lead is another metal that is not in group 1A, 2A, or 3A, so we're going to need to go backwards to figure out the charge. So we have one lead and we have two nitrates. And nitrates have a one minus charge, which means lead must have a two plus charge. So two plus and one minus. Okay, sodium once again has a one plus charge. Iodine has a one minus charge. So our positives are going to switch places. So sodium is now going to hook up with NO3. Now we got to talk about something real quick. I told you guys not to bring over subscripts. But here I did. I brought over this 3. Why would I do that? Well, because NO3 is all one thing, right? That is a polyatomic. NO3, it doesn't really say it's NO3, right? It's one thing. So I do bring over that 3. What I don't bring over is the fact that there are two NO3s. 
okay? So we're going to bring over our NaNO3, and it really bugs me that I used the wrong color, NaNO3, and Na has a 1 plus, NO3 is a 1 minus, and let's see, lead is going to hook up with iodine. And lead is 2 plus, and iodine is 1 minus. All right, so charges on the product side, Na is 1 plus, NO3 is 1 minus, so they're good to go. And lead is 2 plus, iodide is 1 minus, so we need another iodine to neutralize those charges. Okay, so we got all the charges worked out. Last step is to balance, always, always. So we have PB. Now, NO3, he's a polyatomic. Can I write him as NO3? Or do I have to break them up? I can write them as NO3 because there's an NO3 on both sides. And A and I. All right. So on the leads on the reactant side, we have one and one on the product side. NO3s, two on the reactant side, one on the product side. Sodiums, one on the reactant side, one on the product side. Iodines, one on the reactant side, one on the product side. Nope, nope, nope. I really can't count tonight. Two on the product side. All right. So let's start. Sodium or lead, good. Nitrates, not so much. We have two on the reactant side, so let's put a two in front of NaNO3, and that changes our Na's to two and our NO3's to two. So our leads are good, our nitrates are good. Sodiums we need to change. Let's put a 2 in front of NaI. Now we have two sodiums and two iodines, and I think we've got the answer. All right, that's it for today.